Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is S-A-U to the R-A. And I'm here to give you a quick background of who I am and why I'm here. From there, we'll be journeying into why we need to be engaging our youth now more than ever for two reasons. One, it's cheaper than most building sets. And two, the barrier to entry is low enough now to a point where there's no excuse not to be engaging our youth. And while I believe we need to be engaging every child, I focus on marginalized youth because I believe it's imperative to diversify STEM fields. I'm an engineer, and in my last year of college in 2007, I built a laser fire and control unit. Never mind what that is, but the feeling of building something with my own two hands was awesome. Unfortunately, I wish I had that experience before going to college, but it seemed like my choices as a child were limited to remote control cars or RC planes, and while those are kind of neat, I wasn't exactly interested. So I started the MyLab program to inspire passion in engineering with technology-based projects that were art and music themed. Basically, I wanted to give the opportunity to other students to feel the same thing I had felt when I built something. But originally, my focus was with undergraduates, but when summer came and undergraduates went, I shifted my attention towards kids, and I fell in love. In the summer of 2010, I met LaDawn. LaDawn is an example of marginalized youth. She's a young African-American girl who lives in low-income housing. Now, LaDawn participated in my simplified robotics class, and she was among the youngest in the class, so I, I assumed she needed a little extra help. Well, I was wrong. In fact, she was one of two that got every single quiz question right. Furthermore, a year later, her interest in technology is still thriving. In fact, she asked the director of her center if she can try to salvage one of two broken computers. Well, guess what? A nine-year-old took out the hard drive of one and put it into another and fixed a computer. A nine-year-old fixed a computer. Now, I'm relatively inexperienced when it comes to social issues. And as far as I'm concerned, this girl's going to make it no matter what, right? Well, maybe not. And honestly, that's really hard for me to even say. But my 70-plus-year-old faculty friends who have been researching this for the past 40 years tell me that statistically, the chances for LaDawn to succeed are pretty low, and that her current success is more likely due to a few environmental changes. One of those changes are these hands-on projects. Now, I realize that kids who don't live in the right school district are considered marginalized. And unfortunately, not all schools are the same. But some people actually believe that these marginalized children don't have what it takes to succeed. Well, those people clearly haven't worked with those kids. And I realize that the economy is, is pretty tough right now, and I volunteered for the first year and a half to get this program up and running, so I especially know that. But that cool laser fire and control unit I built in 2007 had cost $1,500. But by 2010, only $200. And the microcontroller, the brain that controls the device, took four weeks and 350 pages of documentation to sift through just to get a light to blink. But now with platforms like the Arduino, which have greatly decreased the complexity of programming devices, like this, um, it only takes one day. So what happens when electronics are cheap and easy to learn? The ability to creatively engage our youth, which brings me to Girls Hat Day. Approximately two dozen girls willingly participated in a six-week program to build fabulous hats for the opening day of the horse races. So what's so special about that? Well, each hat had to have some moving part controlled by the Arduino, powered by the necessary circuitry. A group of 20 girls, ages ranging from 7 to 15, being exposed to electrical, mechanical, computer science and engineering without cringing. In fact, having fun. Double fact, they're already thinking of next year's design. So apparently, when you package the fun stuff with the hard stuff, you get a win-win situation. It's like flavored cough syrup. So please, <laughs> so please, don't ignore the potential of our marginalized youth. You don't want to let the LaDons of our world slip through our fingers. And with a little creativity, we can greatly increase the interest in STEM fields. And considering that our world depends on STEM now more than ever, and if we expect to have optimal solutions for things like sustainable energy or renewable urban gardens, then we cannot afford to ignore engaging our future. Thank you. <laughs>